Welcome to my Razer Death Adder Essentials Review. The Death Adder is a model from Razer that first launched all the way back in 2006. The year when Nintendo Wii was first released, Italy won the World Cup and Twitter came out that year so we all know when it all started going wrong. Has Razer released a new Death Adder worthy of such a name? I'll be right back. I'm back. So let's blast through the numbers real quick. So this mouse is 127 millimeters long, 62.7 millimeters wide and 42.7 millimeters tall and weighs 96 grams without the cable. You get five programmable buttons, Razer mechanical switches, a 6400 DPI optical sensor with a max DPI of 6400 and a 2.1 meter rubber cable. The Death Adder shape is one of the more timeless classics. Razer really hit a good shape and they've been making sure they have been regularly revamping it when it's needed. This is a very ergonomic design so I'd recommend that this is mainly for those that use a palm grip as the mouse is really made to make use of your whole hand. That's not to say you can't use other grip types, it's just that you won't really benefit from the great shape. This is one of a few mice where I hardly ever have to adjust my grip even after some longer gaming sessions. For my way of holding it, my pinky and ring finger both sit on the right side and off the mouse pad, and they also are in a natural position for me. You'll notice on the buttons for the mouse 1 and 2 that there's a slight curvature so your fingers are nicely nestled in. This might cause an issue for those that are very particular about where their fingers are placed, but honestly the curves aren't really in the way so your fingers should be comfortable no matter where you place them. On the left side you have a nice curve for the thumb which is very snug. The curve I feel is quite smooth as well so there's no sharper areas that can dig into the palm which is probably helped by with the length of the mouse. Some of the shorter mice that have these curves sometimes I find that they dig a little bit too much into my hand. The coating here isn't the same as the other higher priced razor mice. Those ones have a much more coarse coating that is quite noticeable. Here it is a lot softer. I personally prefer the more coarse coating that come with the pricier variants but this one isn't so bad. I do think that it is slightly stickier than most though. You also get a bit of textured plastic on the right and left sides of the mouse which might be there for the illusion of providing grip but honestly I don't think it really did. It's not really distracting either so it's not a downside. The important buttons being the mouse 1 and 2 are for the most part okay. The switches are crisp and consistent but my only issue with these is that there's a significant amount of noise when you have pressed the button all the way. You hear the switch and then there's the noise of the button hitting the shell or bottoming out. It doesn't cause any performance issues, it doesn't even make the buttons feel mushy because it happens so immediately after the switch has been triggered, but you know, it's just to point out. The side buttons are pretty nice, they are consistent, a good size and easy to reach with a roll of the thumb. There is once again another noise that comes after the switch triggering which makes the mouse sound very hollow. As like the 1 and 2 buttons, this has no effect on the performance. There's also a lack of button, a DPI one. That's right, you can't change DPIs on this mouse on the fly without using the software. But the Super Light has this feature or lack of as well, and that costs a lot more. The scroll wheel here is very good. The notches are a little bit soft, enough that you can get it stuck in between each notch, but it's not as bad as a Zowie scroll wheel. It's also not loud either, so Zowie being outdone by a budget mouse. The switch itself is also great, it's consistent and there's a minimal amount of force required to trigger it. For the dirt check, there are some lines around the mouse that can collect some grime. And because of the snug fit on my palm, it can gather a bit of dirt quite easily. I like mentioning how dirty the mouse can get, it's like I'm breaking down the taboos of society by admitting that we can all get a bit disgusting when gaming. The feet for this mouse are just standard plastic feet, they do cover a good amount of the underside of the mouse and it also has a sensor ring as well to always make sure that there's a reduced risk of any dragging. These aren't going to be the smoothest feet by any means but honestly I think they are acceptable for a mouse of this price bracket. They have a nice consistency to them but they aren't going to be as fast as PTFE ones for example. The cable here is also a standard plastic cable, it has somewhat kept its kinks in it from the way it was packaged but honestly in a bungee it's been no issue for me at all. The entry point into the mouse is actually a bit high up as well so there's no immediate dragging on the mouse map. For software you have Razer Synapse, this has to be installed if you want to change and move away from the preset DPI of 1600 which for a default isn't outrageous. Thankfully they didn't set it to the max of 6400. 
Now this is annoying just because you have to install the software, but it's also because Synapse is a little bit sketchy in terms of usability, and it really pushes creating a Razer account and logging in and all that stuff, which is not what I'm a fan of. But once you've made your changes, you can close it and forget it forever. Interestingly, you can change the DPI steps even though there's nowhere on the mouse to actually do such a thing, but you can change the default DPIs as well by just inputting whatever number you want or moving the slider. You can also change the lights on this, which is just a simple Razer logo. You can change brightness, have it breathe or turn it off. The sensor for this mouse is somewhat hard to find. I've seen that a few years ago it was used on a Pixar PAW3328, so it might still be the same. Anyway, regardless, the sensor seems very good. I've had no issues with it spinning out or behaving oddly at all. I've really tried to make it spin out as well and it just hasn't. It's one of those mice where it's like I'm expecting the sensor to malfunction, but it just doesn't, so I'm very pleased with it. In-game performance has been surprising in the way that it has been very good. I've been using this mainly on 800 DPI and I've tried 400 and 1600 as well and I've had no issues with it at all. I've been on a good grind of it in Apex Legends and it's responded completely fine. I've been using it on my Vax EPA outset pad and my Extra 5 GP4 and it's felt great and smooth on both of them. The weight hasn't even caused me an issue but that might be because I'm no stranger to the chunkier mice as I've used a few in my time. Honestly I was surprised with how much I'd enjoy playing with this in game. As mentioned previously there was this anticipation that the mouse would suddenly start jittering but it just never did it's just been really really consistent and quite nice to use and one of the best things for last it's the cost which is around 20 to 30 dollars or around 23 pounds or between 24 and 30 euros at the time of this review now if you get it at the cheaper side of the price and scale it is a very good purchase i'll hold on to this a bit as it goes into my verdict section so overall i can recommend this mouse it's honestly fantastic and including the price options as i said it's honestly surprising how good it is for the cost if you're looking for a cheap gaming mouse for little Timmy as a present or on a budget, this honestly should serve you well. It's mice like these that made me look at some of my more expensive mice in collection with a bit of disappointment because this mouse is a fraction of the price of most but seems to perform just as well. I've probably played this mouse for around 15 plus hours and it hasn't let me down at all. I think maybe the only downside to this mouse is probably the coating. I feel like after a few hours a softer coating can get a bit sticky and uncomfortable. Regardless, I'm very impressed. This mouse really did surprise me with its performance for the price. So that's all for this review. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below and hopefully I will see you next time.